again as he is so are we in this world that's what it does what we possess entire sanctification he can do it he will do it and Christ will be magnified in our lives in Jesus name look at look at verse 18 there in verse 18 there is no fear in love you know when we're born again we love everybody we love friends but we know that our parents we love them they may persecute us we love them but we also fear them we know that after we are saved our lives are changed there are people around us our neighbors they will see us and say what's that you mean you'll not do this again do that again we love them but we fear them but we come back to god we say lord i want to love like jesus loved he loved the pharisees he knew what they were planning he knew their conspiracies but he never feared them and he knew herod he knew pilate and then pilate said are you this are you that he kept quiet you don't answer me don't you know i have power to release you and power to crucify you you couldn't have any power why if not for the plan of god what power could you have he loved them but he never feared them that's what sanctification does he puts the love you love your neighbor you love the sinners you love the persecutors you love everyone but fear is gone out of your heart towards them in jesus name and you know when you don't fear you love freely you love with all your heart you are not afraid of the consequences they misinterpret your love you love them and they want to test you whether it is real love or not you keep on loving them when he sanctifies us he purifies us there is no fear in love but perfect love casteth out fear because fear has torment when you fear you are tormenting yourself when you fear you give yourself hypertension when you fear you give yourself heart problem when you fear your mind is affected and you think wrong and it affects your health might even shorten your life fear has torment he that feareth is not made perfect in love the lord will perfect his love in our hearts in jesus name he'll do it for me say it aloud he'll do it for me what will your life be what will your progress be what will your usefulness be if you fear nobody on earth and you just love everybody all the time you will climb the highest mountain i'm talking to you i'm prophesying it your life you will climb the highest mountain in jesus name let's come to point number three now point number three the smitten circle of the sick here is christ and this christ is the one that succors us supports us strengthens us and sustains us because that's what he came to do he came to save us from sin and from the consequence of sin hebrews chapter 2 verse 9 but we'll see jesus you will see jesus 
at the point of need in your life, you will see Jesus. In all the predicaments that might come or happen, you will see Jesus in Jesus' name. But we'll see Jesus who is made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor that he, by the grace of God, shall taste death for every man. Look at verse 14. In verse 14, it says, For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil. Say amen there. Amen. I'm going to ask you a question that you know think of in your mind. Is Satan as powerful today as it was in the Old Testament? Answer now. That he might destroy him. Destroy him. That had the power of death. There are people when they pray, they pray as if Satan is still like he was at the Garden of Eden. So mighty, so powerful, so cunning, so crafty, and it's going to bring them down. They pray as if they're living in the days of David. When Satan pushed him, propelled him, tempted him and made him do something you know? and thousands of people that but you know christ on the cross through his death destroyed him that had the power of death that is the devil many people pray and they think about satan as in the gospels before christ went to the cross He's still bothering them. He's still running after them. He's still holding them down. He's still making them sick. He's still, um, you know, kind of disorganizing, you know, all the plans they have in their lives. They never realize what happened to Satan at the cross of Calvary. That Jesus Christ destroyed him that had the power of death. That is the devil. That is the power of Satan is canceled in your life. When you have headache, don't give the credit to the devil. The devil is giving them headache. No, maybe you didn't sleep enough. Maybe you didn't have enough rest. Maybe you've been going on and on without having rest, and your body is sending signal to you, slow down, rest for some time, relax, and then move on. Don't give all the credit to the devil. Maybe, uh, you have constipation. The devil has come again. I'm having a runny stomach. Maybe you overate. Maybe you ate at the wrong time. Maybe you didn't take care what you are eating. Maybe the water you, you know you should drink. You did not drink enough water. Don't give the devil credit. Satan has no power in your life anymore. You're free. Where are you? You are free in Jesus' name. If you are thinking of the devil every time, you'll dream of the devil. Because, you know, every time you're thinking, devil is behind the door, devil is, you know, over there, devil is over there. You know, human beings do some things and then uh, you say that is Satan. It's not Satan, it's them doing that thing. And if he does know it's human being, it's not Satan, you'll have the victory all through your life. You'll be more than a conqueror in Jesus' name. Look at verse 15 there. In verse 15 it says, And deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject unto bondage. Now, you are saved, you are a child of God, and you are even sanctified. 
and the Lord's presence and power is with you, but you do not know that Satan has been conquered and all your lifetime you are subject to bondage. You cannot think free. You cannot walk free. You cannot live free. And there is Satan behind the door all the time. You hear a particular noise. There is Satan. And you hear another one by the window. It's a bird that is, you know, peeking at the window there. But you say, Satan you are in bondage all your life you are free tonight in Jesus name and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject unto bondage look at verse 18 in verse 18 for in that he himself has suffered being tempted he is able to succor them that are tempted. He will support you. He will sustain you. He will succor you. And he will lift you up. That red sea will not drown you in Jesus' name. Three things. Number one, thorough deliverance from the consequences of sin. Number two, triumphant dominion and cure of all sicknesses. Every sickness in your body healed in Jesus' name. Number three, total destruction of the crucibles of Satan. Let's come to number one. Number one, thorough deliverance from the consequence of sin. In Galatians chapter 3, we're reading from verse 13. Christ has redeemed us. From the curse of the law. Make it personal. One, two, three, go. Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law. Be it confirmed be your life in Jesus' name. Be made a curse for us. For it is written, God said this, everyone that hangeth on a tree. Look at verse 14. In verse 14, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ that we that I that I might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith and do say fulfillment the fulfillment of the promises on your life in Jesus name look at number two number two is triumphant dominion and kill of all sicknesses. Anybody having dominion here tonight? Amen. Amen. It is done. Amen. Matthew chapter 8, verse 16. When the evening was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils, and he cast out the spirits with his word and healed, tell me, and healed, tell me. If you are part of this, tell me out aloud. And healed all that was sick. You are healed in Jesus' name. Look at verse 17 there. That it might be fulfilled. Which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet. Saying, himself took. Himself took. Are you there? Himself took, personal, himself took my infirmities and bear my sicknesses. It is done in Jesus' name. Number three now, number three, total destruction of the crucibles of Satan. Crucible, that's where, you know, you put something in, inside that uh, wooden uh, uh, something and then you use the top one and you pound it and pound it it's like you know you put that thing in the crucible 
the devil sometimes you know he has no mercy he doesn't understand compassion or love there's no compassion there's no mercy there's no love there's total wickedness undiluted wickedness and he'll put them in the old covenant he'll put them inside that theater and pound them and pound them in the crucibles until they don't have any strength any power to do anything anymore he cannot touch you like that anymore all those crucibles of satan will be totally destroyed out of your life health health strength power ability agility skill and then you walk like the child of a king. You are more than a conqueror in Jesus' name. Look at First John chapter 3, verse 8. First John chapter 3, verse 8. He that committed sin is of the devil, for the devil sinned from the beginning. Look at this now. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might say it yourself say it aloud destroy the works of the devil they are destroyed in your brain they are destroyed in your body they are destroyed in your project they are destroyed in your profession they are destroyed on your wife on your husband on your children on your mommy on your daddy the works of the devil they are destroyed i remember when we were in taraba some years ago now there was you know somebody i think 23 years of age he'll be crawling on the ground he had a wooden uh, kind of patch and there were small small roller um, rubber uh, tires on that, that thing and then he'll be using them to crawl on the ground and then that time I declared to them I said Christ has given us the victory and that has they believed in Jesus Christ all that works of the devil will be destroyed from their lives as we began to pray and we mentioned the name of Jesus that uh, man 23 years of age crawling on the ground like this all of a sudden he stood up and then he began to walk and he raised up all that uh, kind of wooden board and then he demonstrated completely completely healed the lord is going to replicate it in your life yeah. we finished the crusade there and then the people knew it was the last day of the crusade in taraba jalingo and so you know we said bye bye and all that they parked the car outside the office and they laid three people paralyzed on the ground near the door of uh, the car and uh, as we came out the head of security there at that time was challenging the people why did you put these people here what do you mean you know that uh, this is not right it's a breach of what i said hold on and so i uh, you know talked to those three people just suddenly entering the car i said you are healed you are healed you are healed and then i entered into the car and the car drove up quietly and then as we got to the gate I had shouting and then we stopped and I said what's the shouting about they said those three people one got up two got up number three got up you are a partaker in Jesus name rise up rise up and confirm your freedom rise up and tell the lord it is you are the first partakers and you are the first beneficiaries of the power of christ upon our lives upon your life it will happen it will happen he'll deliver you he will set you free all your weaknesses everything is totally removed you're free you're free. 
all your tears are wiped away all your challenges are taken away christ has come and christ has taken away our sin as well as our sicknesses and the power of the devil is broken from every life in jesus name vitality has come strength has come tell the lord it is yours tell the lord it is yours tell the lord it is yours freedom healing deliverance emancipation sanctification everything available for everyone in jesus name we pray say i am free confirmation in your life in jesus name raise up those anointed hands the people that do know their god they will be strong you'll be strong and they will do exploits you will do exploits in jesus name this crusade coming will not happen behind you it will touch your life it will transform your life it will uplift you out of the dungeon of weakness you'll be strong in jesus name all those requests you have all the prayer items you have the lord will put a smile on your face he will answer your prayer if you have been waiting for miracles 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 you've never had your time has now come father in jesus name we thank you for sending jesus to be our savior to be a healer to be a deliverer to be the destroyer of all the works of the devil to be our sanctifier and to be the power of god in man we pray the purpose for which christ came will be fulfilled in every life here and everywhere tonight in jesus name cleanse everyone purge everyone give assurance of your presence of your peace to everyone's heart in jesus name purify sanctify cleanse and take away that adamic nature and that inbred sin in jesus name any work of the devil in anyone on their body ear eyes kidney anywhere in their body lord i pray you heal them set them free free indeed in jesus name the power of god continue to reside in you as you go you go with joy you go with victory you go as a conqueror and you go understanding greater you see that is in you than he that is in the world and the lord perfect everything concerning your life in jesus name lord we thank you because we know it is done for him it is done for her it is done for their children it is done in their profession it is done in the work of your hand it is done and you'll enjoy the blessing the provision the presence of christ in your life throughout your days in jesus name thank you lord thank you lord in jesus name we pray
Heavenly Father, we bless your name for the opportunity to be in your presence tonight. We ask that your presence come down in our midst in Jesus' name. Bless everyone that is seated here and as many that will be hearing us anywhere. Lord, we ask that your blessings will flow in Jesus' name. That the, at the end of meeting tonight, we'll have every cause to glorify your name in Jesus' name. Thank you for having answered us. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. I will sing unto the Lord a joyful song. I will praise his name for the Lord is good. Hallelujah. Sing unto the Lord a joyful song. I will praise his name for the Lord is good. Let us sing unto the Lord a joyful song. Let us praise his name for the Lord is good. Hallelujah. Sing unto the Lord a joyful song. Let us praise his name for the Lord is good. Brethren, sing unto the Lord a joyful song let us praise his name for the lord is good hallelujah sing unto the lord a joyful song let us praise his name for the lord is good sing unto the lord a joyful song let us praise his name for the lord is good praise the lord my spirit soul and body praise the lord my spirit soul and body praise the lord my spirit soul and body shout hallelujah hallelujah praise the lord my spirit soul and body praise the lord my spirit soul and body praise the lord my spirit soul and body shout hallelujah amen amen blessings and glory wisdom thanksgiving and honor power and mind belong to the lord forever and ever amen singing amen 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 blessings and glory wisdom thanksgiving and honor power and mind belong to the lord forever and ever amen this is my night of joy my night of joy my night of joy hallelujah this is my night of joy my night of joy my night of joy hallelujah this is my night of joy my night of joy my night of joy hallelujah this is my night of joy my night of joy my night of joy hallelujah this is my night of joy my night of joy my night of joy hallelujah tonight is my night of joy my night of joy my night of joy this is my night of joy the night of joy a night of joy hallelujah tonight is the night of joy the night of joy the night of joy it's not by power, it's not by might, by my spirit, says the Lord. It's not by power, it's not by might, by my spirit, says the Lord. This mountain.
mountain, this mountain must be removed. This mountain must be removed in Jesus' name. This mountain must be removed by my spirit, says the Lord. It's not by power, it's not by might, by my spirit, says the Lord. It's not by power, it's not by might, by my spirit, says the Lord. This mountain, this mountain must be removed in Jesus' name. This mountain must be removed in Jesus' name. This mountain must be removed by my spirit, says the Lord. Jesus sets me free. I cannot be bound. Jesus sets me free. I cannot be bound. Jesus sets me free. I cannot be bound. I cannot be bound. I cannot be bound. Jesus sets me free. I cannot be bound. Jesus sets me free. I cannot be bound. Jesus sets me free. I cannot be bound. Satan, I cannot be bound. I cannot be bound. Jesus sets me free. I cannot be bound. Jesus sets me free. I cannot be bound. Jesus sets me free. I cannot be bound. Demons, I cannot be bound. Jesus sets me free. I cannot be bound. Jesus sets me free. I cannot be bound. Jesus sets me free. I shall not be bound. I shall not be bound. Bye bye, failure. Bye bye, failure. Bye bye, failure. Failure. Bye bye. We are marching into the success city. Bye bye, failure. Bye bye, failure. Bye bye. Bye bye, bye bye, bye bye. Bye bye, failure. Bye bye, failure. Bye bye, failure. Failure. Bye bye. We are marching into the success city. Bye bye, failure. Bye bye, failure. Bye bye. Bye bye, sickness. Bye bye, sickness. Bye bye, sickness. Sickness. Bye bye. We are marching into the healing city. Bye bye, sickness. Bye bye, sickness. Bye bye. Bye bye, bye bye, bye bye. Bye bye, sickness. Bye bye, sickness. Bye bye, sickness. Sickness. Bye bye. We are marching into the healing city. Bye bye, sickness. Bye bye, sickness. Bye bye. Bye bye, disappointment. Bye bye, disappointment. Bye bye, disappointment. Disappointment. Bye bye. We are marching into the appointment city. Bye bye, disappointment. Bye bye, disappointment. Bye bye. Bye bye, bye bye, bye bye. Bye bye, failure. Bye bye, failure. Bye bye, failure. Failure. Bye bye. We are marching into the success. City, bye bye, failure. Bye bye, failure. Bye bye. God's not dead, He's alive. 
God's not dead, he's alive. God's not dead, he's alive. I fear him in this church. I fear him in my home. I fear him all over me. He is not dead. God's not dead. He is alive. God's not dead. He is alive. God's not dead. He is alive. I fear him in my life. I fear him in my home. I fear him all over me. He is not dead. God's not dead. He is alive. God's not dead. He is alive. God is not dead. He is alive. I fear him in this church. I fear him in this place. I fear him all over me the man of calvary he has done it before in my life in this place he will do it again jesus of galilee he has done it before in my life in this place he will do it again the man of calvary he has done it before in my life in this place he will do it again jesus of galilee he has done it before in my life in this place he will do it again God cannot lie, his word must surely come to pass, because he's not him. God is not a man, his word must surely come to pass. He is not a man, because he's not him. God is not a man, his word must surely come to He is not a man. Because he's not him. God is not a liar. His word must surely come to pass. Because he's not a man. His word must surely come to pass in my life. Because he's not him. God is not a man. His word must surely come to he is not a man because he's not a man i believe yes lord i believe yes lord i believe it is well with me it is well with me i believe yes lord i believe yes lord i believe it is well with me it is well with me i believe yes lord i believe yes lord i believe it is well with me it is well with us i believe yes lord i believe yes lord i believe it is well with us, it is well with all. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, I believe it is well with us. Unchangeable God, unchangeable God. Unchangeable God, unchangeable God, unchangeable God. The Lord, unchangeable God. Unchangeable God, unchangeable God. Unchangeable God. Jesus, unchangeable God. 
unchangeable God, unchangeable God, unchangeable God, unchangeable God, the Lord, unchangeable God, unchangeable God, unchangeable God, unchangeable God, unchangeable God, the Lord, unchangeable God, unchangeable God, unchangeable God, unchangeable God, unchangeable God, unchangeable God, my God, unchangeable God, unchangeable God, unchangeable God, unchangeable God, unchangeable God, unchangeable God, power, power belong to God, power, power belong to God, power, power belong to God, power. Power belong to God, power, 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 power belong to God. God, power, power belong to God, power, power belong to God, power, power belong to God, power. Jesus conquered the world and gave us victory, 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 hallelujah. Conquered the world and gave us victory. Victory, victory, hallelujah. Jesus conquered the world and gave us victory. Victory, victory, hallelujah. Jesus conquered the world and gave us victory. Victory, victory, hallelujah. The Lord has conquered the world and gave us victory 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 hallelujah we are victorious yes we are victorious glory be to god who has given us victory victory we are victorious yes we are victorious glory be to god who has given us victory victory we are victorious yes we are victorious glory be to god who has given us victory we are victorious yes we are victorious glory be to god who has given us victory victory we are victorious yes we are victorious glory be to god who gave us that victory the power, the power, the Pentecostal power is just the same today. No matter what may say, the power, the power, the Pentecostal power, it is just the same today, today. The power, the power, the Pentecostal power is just the same today today no matter what may say the power the power the pentecostal power it is just the same today the power the power the pentecostal power is just the same today no matter what may say the power the power the pentecostal power it is just the same
head. I welcome everyone tonight in Jesus' name. And I pray that your coming will not be in vain. That the word of God will have power, impact, penetration into your life in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you tonight. We bless your name. We thank you because you brought us together so you can reveal your mind and give us the revelation of heaven. We pray tonight you expound, you expand, and you instruct us in your word in Jesus' name. And we pray that the fire in the word, the power in the word will quicken us and make us alive to be the man, the woman, the leader, the worker, and the minister we ought to be in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name, we pray. And the whole church said, Amen. God bless you. You can sit down. We're coming to Matthew chapter 1. I was looking at verse 21, Matthew chapter 1, reading from verse 21. Here is good news. The good news that the whole world, from the beginning of creation to that time, they have been waiting for. Here is good news. The good news that God himself spoke about at the beginning in Genesis, when Adam and Eve fell, and they were driven out of the Garden of Eden, the Garden of Peace, the Garden of Joy, the Garden of Pleasure. Here is the good news that comes to us that all the prophets have been thinking about. All the prophets have been examining, requesting, when will this happen? They read all those prophecies in the Old Covenant, in the Old Testament, that somebody is coming. And when he comes, he will bruise the head of the devil. When he comes, he will cleanse and totally take away all the consequences of the fall of Adam and Eve. And they were looking and expecting, when we see, when will he come? And all of a sudden, an angel came from heaven and appeared unto Mary and said, Hail Mary, you are favored above all women. And then gave her the news and Mary said, How shall this be? Because I never knew a man. It was her. There is Mary, Virgin Mary, that the prophecy of Isaiah will be fulfilled on her. It had been given about 700 years before that time. And here came the D-Day and the moment when that prophecy will be fulfilled. And eventually the angels appeared and they glorified God and they said glory to God. God in the highest and peace on earth because to you is born this day in the city of David the Savior Jesus Christ and then those shepherds they ran quickly to that place to go and see what they were told of and when they got there how happy they were how joyful they were and they left and they went and told all the people that they met today they were looking at the very message of the angel unto Joseph about Mary look at your Bible Matthew chapter 1 verse 21 and she shall bring forth a son she shall bring forth a son that that's a, you know a unique son a son that is universally going to bless the rest of the world she shall bring forth a son and thou shalt call his name Jesus you will not pull out any name like the Jewish people I call him by the name of my father by the name that I like this one will have a name that is already registered in heaven before he was conceived thou shall call his name Jesus that means Jehovah saves Jehovah is the Savior the Lord is Savior for he shall save his people from their sins in the Old Testament all the priests that served and ministered in the temple they still had their own sin and so they'll make sacrifice for their own sin the priests were sinful but he shall save the priests from 
their sins. As you look at the prophets of the Old Testament, it will not take you long reading. You will know that those prophets, they arch their sins. They were not free from sin all the time. But then he will come, and for he shall save the prophets from their sins. And then you find the parents, the parents uh, all over in Israel, men and women, you've read about them and you've seen their deficiencies, you've seen their iniquities, you've seen their sins. They could not be free from sin. In fact, even, you know, as parents do, parents will tell lies even to their own children. You know, when a child is uh, crying, uh, the parents will say, police is coming, police is coming. And the police will get you and grab you now and they have been telling lies to their children from the young age but then those spirits when Christ comes he shall call he shall come and he shall save those parents from their sins and then the poor people all those poor people in the land uh, they gave excuses that you know because we are poor if we don't uh, sin if we don't do this are we going to make it in life but those poor people he shall save the peace signs from their sins the rich people too were there and all those pe rich people like Zacchaeus they will go into sin but it will save the prosperous people out of their sins. All the people, young and old, men and women, the purpose of Christ's coming is that when he comes, he is a savior, he is a redeemer. He will save his people from their sins. Look at that word from. As you look at the word from, it's like when somebody falls into a well. If he remains in the well, it's not saved. If it is still crying in the well and drinking the dirty water in the well, it's not safe. But when you throw down a rope, he grabs that rope and you pull him out of the well. The well is separated from him. He is separated from the well. Then he is saved. Think about seeing like a well of dirty water. A well of poisonous water, a well of uh, degrading water, defiling water, and every man has fallen into that well. And when Christ comes, what does he do? He shall save, he'll pull them out, save his people from their sins. Now, whenever Jesus saved anyone from sickness, the sickness will not remain not a trace not any part of that sickness will remain so if he saves from sickness and the sickness does not remain in any form in any shape even a little bit of the sickness will not remain the same thing when he saves from sin he shall save his people from their sins the sins will not remain when Jesus saves us from Satan and from the affliction of Satan and from all the pressures of Satan, a demon-possessed person, a person who is overcome by Satan, and then Jesus comes and he saves that man from the hand of Satan. That power of Satan and that oppression of Satan and that evil force of Satan will not remain in any form. If he says from sickness, sickness does not remain in the life of that man. If he saves from Satan, Satan's power, attack and affliction does not remain in the life of that man when he saves from sin. Sin will not remain in the mind, in the man or in the woman. You cannot say, I am saved. I am still sinning. You can't say that. I am prayed for by Christ. Christ has healed me. I am still sick. You cannot say that. Christ has delivered me from Satan. But Satan is still having authority over my life. You cannot say that. He will save. He will rescue, he will deliver, he will take out his people from their sins. That's the good news. And good news makes people happy. 
makes people joyful. What you couldn't do for yourself, what you couldn't achieve for yourself, good news has come. Christ, the mighty one, Christ, the Savior, the mighty Savior, he has come to save his people who are the people, the people who flock to him. The people who go to him, the people who repent as they come to him and they trust him and they believe him and they accept him fully and they say, Lord, here we come, save us. He saves them and their lives will never be the same again. The subject tonight, Jesus, the Savior from sin and all its consequences jesus the savior from sin and all its consequences we're looking at this under three subtitles number one the spotless savior of all sinners the spotless savior of all sinners number two the sinless sanctifier of all saints and number three the smitten succor of the sick the smitten succor of the sick let's look at number one number one is the spotless savior of all sinners it tells us in acts chapter 3 verse 26 it tells us unto you first god have been raised up his son Jesus, that's the name, that's the name Jesus, sent him to bless you in turning away every one of you from, from, from his iniquities. And then he tells us in chapter 4 of Acts, Acts chapter 4, reading from verse 12, neither is there salvation in any other but there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. We must be saved. There's no other name. All those names you've read in Matthew chapter 1, in Luke chapter 3, none other name, no Jewish name could save. And all the names of the Gentiles, none other name could save. Names in the past, names in the present, and names in the future. There is no other name by which any man can be saved. We're looking at First Peter chapter 1, reading from verse 18. First Peter chapter 1, verse 18, for as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from 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 your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers look at verse 19 but with the precious blood of christ the precious blood of christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot is the spotless savior of all sinners, there are three things there. Number one, the prophecy fulfilled by Jesus as Savior. Number two, the purpose of full justification, our salvation. And then number three, the power of freedom through Jesus from all sins. Let's look at number one there in the prophecy. The, what we have read about in Matthew chapter 1. Look at Matthew chapter 1, reading from verse 21. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he, only he can do it. For he, the spotless one, the sinless one, the eternal one, for he shall save his people from their sins. Verse 22, that tells us now, all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet saying, verse 23, it says, Behold, the virgin shall be a child and shall bring forth a son a virgin not a woman a virgin somebody a woman who has never known a man a virgin shall be our child and shall bring forth a son and they shall 
call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is everybody God with us. He came to fulfill prophecy. Look at Isaiah chapter 7, reading from verse 14. Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14. Therefore, the Lord Himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. If you were the person, I say that God gave such a prophecy to a word, tell it, declare it, tell everyone that a virgin shall conceive. Have you studied science? How can that be possible? Why don't you think of what you are saying before you say that? Have you studied human history? Has that ever taken place? A virgin shall conceive. Why don't you think through before you, you know, declare all these things? Do you know the possibility, scientifically, humanly speaking, do you know how possible it will be? That's the problem of many preachers, not here, but over there in the world. Whatever they cannot prove scientifically and whatever they don't know how it will happen, they cannot declare a virgin shall conceive, a man shall be holy, a person shall be totally free from every stain, every spot, every defilement of sin. A man can be perfected by God. Be that perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect. Whatever they cannot prove, whatever they cannot, um, you know, analyze scientifically, they don't believe that God happened. When we talk about God, He's able to do all things. He's able to fulfill whatever prophecy He has given. And so I say, not thinking about what anybody will say, not thinking about the possibility of fulfillment. He was not the one to do it. It was the Almighty God that will do it. Therefore, He said it openly and He said it confidently. Therefore, the Lord Himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Actually, I say I was not the first to say that. It had been prophesied earlier by God himself in a different language, but very clear in Genesis chapter 3, looking at verse 15. I will put enmity between thee and the woman, between thy seed and her seed. Everyone that is born into the world is referred to as the seed of the man. But this is going to be unique, distinct, different. This kind had never been, will never be until Christ and after Christ it will never be. It says her seed, it shall bruise thy head that is when that seed of the virgin when he comes he'll bruise the head of the devil and thou devil satan serpent shall bruise his heel the only thing you'll be able to do satan is to crucify him and nail his feet on the wood on the cross and then that will mean he'll knock you down and knock you out. He will defeat you. He'll defeat Satan for you. Luke chapter 1, we're reading from Bastati. In Luke chapter 1, reading from Bastati, and the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary. Now, angels don't question God 
when they are sent on a message. Go to Mary, tell her this. She, without knowing man, will be the mother of Christ, Jesus, my only begotten son. Angels will not say, Father, why Mary? Are there not other virgins? They won't ask any question. Angels will not say, why now? At the time God sends them, they go. And they go promptly. And they go and obey implicitly. And they obey without a question. That's why Jesus taught us and he said, Thy will be done on earth by kingdom citizens as it is done in heaven. When God gives you a message, when God sends you on an errand, you do it at the time he tells you to do it. You don't say, I wait for my own time. The angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. Look at verse 31. It says, And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. Verse 32. It says, He shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest, not the son of Joseph, the son of the highest, and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. In verse 33, it says, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. He shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. That has not happened. He came the first time. He came to sacrifice for the sins of the whole world as the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. is coming the second time as the Lion of the tribe of Judah. And it will set up a kingdom and it will reign. That is still to happen. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. Look at verse 34. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be seen? I know not a man. That confirms he was a virgin. And now they answer in verse 35. And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee. The power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing, Christ is holy. Christ is righteous. Christ is spotless. Therefore, that holy sin which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. He came to fulfill prophecy. Number two here. In number two, we're looking at the purpose of full justification. That's our salvation. Why did he come? Look at Acts chapter 13, reading from verse 33. God has fulfilled the same unto us, their children, in that he has raised up Jesus again. As it is also written in the second psalm, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee, have I begotten thee, have I begotten thee. It's not a son of Joseph, it's a son of the almighty God. The God of heaven said, I have begotten thee. And then what did he come to do? Verse 38. In verse 38, be it known unto you therefore men and brethren that through this man Jesus is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins. Verse 39. It says by him all that believe. All that believe. Whether they are here or there. All that believe at that time or at this time. All that believe are justified from all things from which ye could not be justified by the law 
of Moses. Think about that now. All that believe are justified from all things, all their sins, from which ye could not be justified by the law of Moses. When that justification comes, he makes us better, cleaner, more righteous than all the people of the Old Testament. Think about all of them. It says, all that could not be justified by the law of Moses in the Old Covenant, as we come to Christ in the New Covenant, the salvation, the justification, the renewal, the righteousness is higher and greater than that of the Old Testament. It tells us in Romans chapter 3, and reading from verse 24, it says, being justified freely, we don't have to bring an animal. We don't have to bring, uh, you know, sugar cane. We don't have to bring uh, any turtle or any kind of animal burned before the Lord. It says, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. That redemption, that forgiveness is in Christ Jesus. Verse 25, it says, whom God has set for to be a propitiation through faith. In his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission, remover, cleansing, freedom from sins that have passed through the forbearance of God. In verse 26, it tells us, it says to declare, I say, at this time, at this time, at this time, in this, our dispensation, it says to declare at this time his righteousness that he might be just and the justifier of him that believeth in Jesus. He came to save his people from their sins, but then everyone has to come, repent, believe. In Jesus Christ. Number three here. In number three, the power of freedom through Jesus from all sins. The power of freedom from all sins. He sets us free. In John chapter 8, reading from verse 11, it says, and she said, No man, Lord, no man has been able to condemn her or throw a stone at her. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee, go and sin no more. Have you noticed here that the woman appeared quiet, was not rolling on the ground, but Christ spoke the word. And any time Christ spoke the word against Satan, against sickness, always fulfilled. And when he spoke against sin, always fulfilled. The woman became a free. And then we're told in verse 32, it says in verse 32, And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Then in verse 36, If the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. You are free. I am free. And it says, indeed, what's the difference between you shall be free and you shall be free indeed. That means examine him, examine her, examine every part, examine all the bondage of the past and all the sinfulness of the past. Christ now comes into his life, into our life and makes her free and she's free completely, entirely, and totally free for good. And whenever Satan comes with the old temptation, he'll say, you don't know you are coming to, I am not only free, I am free indeed. You are free indeed in Jesus' name. Look at Romans chapter 6, verse 18. In Romans chapter 6, verse 18, being then made free from sin, 
free from sin. Let's remember that illustration I gave that somebody fell into the well and the well has dirty water, poisonous water that will destroy the skin of the person. But now somebody came and brought that fellow out of the well and took all the dirty water that went into him, pumped everything out. The man is free. The woman is free. The same thing with salvation. Being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. In verse 22, but now be made free from sin. Emphasize again, ye became servants to God, and ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. Everlasting life will not come. Eternal life will not come. If there's no freedom from sin, the top part of the verse said, being now made free from sin, become, you become. There is a new creation and there is a new nature and there is a new lifestyle. You become the servants to God and ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end and the goal and the achievement and the result is everlasting 